Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Well, I thought I would do a easy little back-to-school project, but before I do it, I wanted to show you some of the really beautiful cards and presents that some of my viewers sent me. Here is, let me get that out of the way, here is the first one. This is from my friend Sana in uh, Finland. She used uh, a die that does layers of waves, which is really pretty, if you can see that hopefully. And then uh, she put in two of those die cut um, swans. And then I want to show you some of the presents she sent me. She sent me some little owl die cuts and some plain die cuts. I love the planes. These are so cute. I'll definitely be making those on a masculine card. And then she sent me, I'm not exactly sure what this is. I don't want to take it out. All right, maybe I will take it out. It's little papers. Aren't they pretty? But they're almost like plastic. They're really, really nifty. I'm going to use them on a card I think, I don't know exactly what they're intended for, but they're so beautiful. And these are from Finland, so I love that they're coming from somewhere outside the U.S. And then these are crowns, because you know I am kind of a princess. And, um, oh, let's get one out, because, you know, why waste a moment? you got to have a princess crown all of the, all the time. And there are a variety of crowns here. So in case I need to have a more queenly crown, that would be these, and more princessy crown would be those. Aren't they cute? And that, I think that's everything she sent me. If I miss anything, I'm sorry. I had everything in a pile, and then I dropped the pile. Oh, and this is her envelope. Nice job with the washi tape. Really pretty. Then I got this card, and I don't know what I did with the envelope. I am so sorry. This card is unbelievable, and this is from my friend Arlene. Wait till you see this. I'm going to pull it. Arlene, this had to have taken you forever. Look at that. Is that amazing? I'll hold it up this way so you can see the many layers of it. Isn't it gorgeous? And I'll stand it. Isn't it pretty? This would make the most beautiful wedding card. Arlene, you are so talented at doing something that involves so much die cutting and layering. It's so beautiful. Thank you so much. Oh, and she sent me a pack of cutting dies from AliExpress that she ordered two of. Arlene, I might have ordered these, but I'm gonna I'm not gonna take them out of the packaging because if I did order them, um, I'll pass these on to somebody else. But if I didn't. I love them. I love this pattern and use it on my, I only have one of them and use that on that album I just made and I only had one Arlene so it's, so um, anyway and the back of her card has a little handmade with glove sticker. So cute. Arlene I don't know what I do with your envelope. Abe. It's really pretty. I'm so sorry. It, it's somewhere. If I find it we're going to make sure I show it. And then lastly, this is from my friend Heidi. Look at her puppy. Is that not the cutest baby you've ever seen? You know I'm a fan for the dogs. And look at her envelope. I covered up her name and address so you can't see it. But look at these little bird stamps. I love that, Arlene. Would love... No, excuse me, Heidi. Heidi, I would love it if you would tell me where you got this little flying bird that looks like he's a little bit possessed. So cute. And then I wasn't sure if this was one of those rollers stamps. I have those rolling stamps, but I've never used them. But it's so cute. And I never thought to do it on an envelope. Why didn't I? I don't know. But then she made me this. It is so, so sweet. It's a little mini album. I'll show you all the little components. This pulls out and it says, it's the kindest souls, if the kindest souls were rewarded with the longest lives, dogs would outlive all of us. That is the truth. I love that. And then little dog bone with a little heart on it. And then it says, when you say, no, sorry, I don't have my glasses on, can you tell that? When your day isn't going like it should, a slobbery kiss, a happy tail, and suddenly life is good. So sweet. And then the dog wash, and then in the front, it has two more pull-out tabs. This one says, if I had a dollar for every time a dog made me smile, I'd be a millionaire. Isn't that the truth? And then it slides back into the side. This took a long time to make, and it's so beautiful. Hold on, i got to figure out where 
where to stick it back in. She, this is a b paper bag, and I've made paper bag albums before, but mine were never this cute. Honestly, this one is adorable. And then this one is the bark, and then it says, The journey of life is sweeter when traveled with a dog. Also very true. I love how you did this uh, distressing on this bag so it almost looks like wood. It's really cool. did a great job. I'll save this. Save all of these forever, but isn't that gorgeous with the little doggy on the front? And I read the back to you. And then that, again, this goes with her cute envelope. Really cute. And she wrote me a really nice letter to tell me about her puppy. So cute. Thank you so much, everyone, for the lovely things you sent me. I'm so, so thrilled. I'll make sure to put them in my drawer of goodness so that I can look at it whenever I'm having a down day. And... Then we'll go on to our project. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're going to go to the Dollar Tree and find these. They're called chatties, but they're microfiber little socklet type things. And I, um, I talked to my niece, who's 16, and she says that kids do wear these. Heck if I know what kids wear. You know, I'm old. So I'm going to cut these out. Hold on. Oh, and look. Look what I just did. Don't do that when you're cutting yours. So apparently these orange ones are no longer viable because I ruined them. But you know what? That's even better because I'll practice on that pair. So this is the pair, and there is cardboard under there. So keep them on the cardboard. I got in the mail from my lovely friends at Rubber Stamp Tapestry their newest stamp sets and there are three of them this is one this is um, ha a beautiful day and I've already cut it out it was one long sheet and I'll attach at the beginning of this no I'm going to do another video with uh, a card that should have this information on it and show you how I cut these out and it's beautiful day and these are the stamps you get it with it so you get bigger b bigger bees you get three different bees in four different bees sorry in this set five different bees in this set I made that up as I went then in this set that's called I think this one's called field of clover no this is a bee set sorry I'm so inefficient today chamomile bee cute idea and then the last one is Field of Clover, and this has really pretty clover in it, and then all the flowers you would get with clover, as well as a fern. And so I have all of my stamps here um, set up. And what you need when you make anything like this, I'm going to use little buzzing bees that I have two different sizes of. And I could use some of the flowers, but I only have black stays on to play with. You need to have a, a permanent ink, and this is a solvent ink, and so it's a permanent ink. That's what you need to have to do this project. I hope my black ink doesn't need re-inked. Um, stays on does require being re-inked quite often because of the formulation of it, and so it's one of those things that when you buy this, if you buy it, you really need to buy the re-inker. But the lovely thing about it, if you love the smell of almonds, and I do, these smell really good. And as I said, I'm going to ruin these, uh, these, the orange ones by practicing on them because, you know, I r cut a hole in them right there. Cut a hole in one of them. I thought I cut a hole in both of them, but only one. So anyway, I'm going to use the smallest. Uh, this is the Bitty Buzzing Bee. Say that three times fast. And this is the Tiny Busy Bee the two that I'm using. You can buy them separately. Um, Lindsay has a promotional code right now, so if you do want to uh, buy these stamps, uh, you could use her promo code, and I'll link the video that she talks about them in. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to stamp bees on my socks. You know how you can buy socks that um, are more expensive because they've got all kinds of decorations on them? Well, you're going to have your own decorated socks by just stamping them yourself. It's just another way to use your stamps and find um, you know different uses for them. And I like that. I like anything that makes my stamps have more versatility. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but it, there's a little bit of edge showing. So you're going to get your 
scissors, I'm going to do this on camera so you can see it. And I just kind of snip the edges off like that. Anywhere there's not a stamp, I just snip the edge. It's no problem at all. If you watch my video on essential tools, those scissors are in it because if you do anything with rubber stamps, red rubber stamps, often you will have to do some kind of um, cutting on the edges of them. Now these, my edges here are kind of stretched. I don't know if you can see that or not. But because they're stretchy, my B doesn't show up as well on it. Maybe it'll show up better once it goes back to normal size. And I'm just pushing as hard as I can to make sure that my image really shows up well. Oh, good thing I'm throwing that out. Push that a little bit too hard. Here's the deal. I would practice on one of these. And since you get four pairs for a dollar, pick a color you don't like and practice on it. And since I already ruined this pair, I'm good to go. I think this one has an edge that needs to be trimmed too, so I'm just going to snip that. Just like to do that the first time I use them, and that way they're done. Ooh, that one really comes out cute when you stamp it. I mean, obviously you won't stamp them that many times. I'm just practicing. And then I'm going to put this sock over it. I don't know which way is the front. must be this way. That could be the back. And I'm going to do them backwards from what the other one was. I think. If I can get my... There we go. Look, I didn't. It, it's curling in half. I like of the two of them. I like the littler B. I think it stamps. Um, you can really see the stamp. You can see the little B much better than the bigger one. I think the bigger one, because there's there's more real estate on it, it doesn't show up as well as this little one. I'm still getting a little edge. I need to trim that somewhere, right there. I think that's probably what the normal person would stamp on theirs not crazy sandy and he, here is if you've never used peg stamps before the company is called rubber stamp tapestry but they're pegstamps.com on the internet this little line right here is the line it lines up the bottom of the B so if you're wondering you know when you're stamping crazily like I do you can do it really quickly because if you put that line so it faces you then you know that the B is straight up and down when you do that then if you want to turn it a little bit you just turn it so that the little uh, mark is in a different direction. So that's how I would do it. And I would do the, you know, you're gonna go around, you can go around the back with it so that the back of your sock is decorated too. But this would be a fun project to do with kids. Um, I think it would be a fun project to do with kids because they would be able to make their socks their own. And, you know, Rubber Stamp Tapestry has every kind of um, animal and um, design imaginable. Look, I'm going crazy now on this one since I'm going to be tossing them. Um, you, you, they have almost every design you can imagine. And I'm not sponsored by them. I just love their stamps, as you probably know, because I'm committed or should be committed and I just think they're really cute now again uh, stays on is a permanent ink you're just gonna let them dry and they dry pretty much immediately let me just smear this with my finger and we'll see if any of them smear see that's how quick they dry there none of them smeared and let's look at our first one and see what it looks like obviously that's a pretty mark there um, but like I said I think the smaller images work better so uh, my recommendation is pick small images and go with them let me see here's a little flower that's really pretty we'll do that on the back just so you can see what another small image would look like and again there's my line right there so I'll put that facing me that means that the flower is going to be straight up and down and this is a flower that has a, um, if you've ever seen echinacea, that's what these fl these flowers look like. They have a big 
uh, rounded uh, head on them, and then the, then they have leaves like a daisy. Petal leaves made that up. Uh, petals like a daisy. So um, it has a big head on it like that. Then um, we'll do some clover because we'll see what a big stamp does on it. Since you know we're going crazy now on these orange ones. Actually, that stamped well. Let me go to the other sock and we'll stamp on the inside of it and see what it looks like on the inside. Okay, ready? This is um, just trying the clover out as a bigger stamp to see what it does. Now, if you see that little half moon right there, that's when your stamp needs trim. So what I would recommend you doing is when you get any rubber stamp, and I'll just do this for you, when you get other any rubber stamp, stamp it and really stamp it and see how I still have a little line below it that's because I didn't trim that part of the stamp so that's the thing I would recommend you doing just to make sure that your stamps are trimmed up and once they're trimmed well you won't have any problems with that but all rubber stamps have that problem uh, if they're not trimmed down and they and a lot of them even like uh, the Stampin' Up stamps they, they have that problem too after we've done our practicing, I decided I was going to try a pair with this big uh, dandelion flower that's a jumbo. I like the idea of it because it's so big, and I think I'll just take, uh, I think now, I'm going to do it on these fuchsia colored because they're bright, and I think they would look great with just a big black flower stamped on the toe. So I'm just going to stamp three of these on them. I need more ink on that, I think. Really hold it down in place. When you're doing something this big, you're going to, that one's much better. You really want to make sure that you get some serious color on them. I could stamp over that one. I might try it. Because it's not like it's that. Um, If I screw it up, I screw it up, right? Oh, it's much darker. That's much better. Now you can color these if you want to with some Derwent Ink Tense pencils. They're a watercolor pencil that when it's permanent, it um, or when it's dried, it's permanent. So it's not like a true watercolor. Uh, but it's totally up to you what you want to do. I'm going to do the toe of this one the exact same way. But um, Keep in mind, the more ink you have on this, and the longer you hold it in place, and kind of minimally rock it back and forth, the better you're going to have your image. I really like that one. You don't have to color these in. You don't have to do really anything to them after, after you're done with them. But if you do want something additional to them, you can, like I said, you can use Derwent Ink Tense colored watercolor pencils. They are permanent when dry. So you could use those to color them, and you could go right over the image and uh, color with that pencil. Let me see. I have this, it's like a um, blue-green color. I'll see if it shows up at all on the center. Let me wet it. You can either wet it with a water brush or a regular brush. You can take the brush right to the sock and color like this. Or you can take the pencil. Once it's wet, you can just dampen the tip and color with that. Don't use dye-based inks or distress inks. The only inks you should use or what's called a solvent ink because that's the only one that will work on fabric. So what we'll do is I'll wait for these to dry and we'll come back. I think they're really fun and frisky and if you're looking for something to do as a quick crafty thing with your kids back going before going back to school or you know now that they're back to school if they need a after school activity that is not sitting by the computer this is a great one because it's simple and it's fun and it ends up taking four or five pairs of socks that are kind of blah and turning them into something fun and frisky. So there is the other one. That's the first one we did. So I'll show you these once they're dry, but um, that's all you have to do to make your socks frisky. So here's our socks now that they're completely dry. I wanted to make sure I waited for the ink 
from the, or the pencil lead to dry on them. And they didn't get very blue, but I thought they came out really cute. I think it's a great thing for you to do with your kids for back to school and a little project after school if you want. I hope you enjoyed this and you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Please tell one of your friends about me on social media. I'd love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.